Very well. Now that you have that uh, context from the previous part, please now heed what's going on with M. Not, yeah, with MTN growing itself. <clears throat> like weeds uh essentially and also getting very untrained unskilled amateur people that they're training on the job through through um what's the word that i'm looking for contracted train training companies like they've been contracted to train a certain skill like pinball for project management uh BA Bog for business analysts then and why well, yeah it was outsourced. They outsourced training for the staff that were basically like babies out of a out of fresh out of the, out of the mother's womb. That they had to train ABCs, one, two, threes. And it was the ABCs and one, two, threes of Telco. And at the time they could do that because Telco was a relatively new industry. So they were training people from scratch and investing in their education, paying for their fees and all that jazz. So it was like running both a university and a corporate at the same time uh people are learning on the job so the number of years that they take being an overhead as opposed to a profit center was a lot longer than the average company if you understand what i'm saying when a person starts working in an organization the first f f few years or months of them working there they're just uh, expensive to the company they are an overhead they they're not they, they have not yet added value there comes a time however when they start to earn value for the organization and mtn their uh, turnover time from between their turnover percentage of uh overhead staff to profit uh, center staff was very high because their staff remained overheads for a very long amount of time but remember the product was selling itself the company was therefore burgeoning booming so people who weren't even all that skilled were getting very far business um like uh, what is this a specula specs like what do you what do, what do they call this like um business requirement specifications uh oh i'm thinking about again develop you know when you have to develop something a system a product very well you first got to do a spec for it uh in terms of uh, business rules you've got to come up with even a uh, is design you know a salute a conceptual solution design all of these things yeah the quality of them in the early like at mtn all the way up until all the way up until and again this is public knowledge because maturity the, the maturity rating of an organization um is public knowledge especially if it is a public company that uh, that has sold stocks and stuff and what have you has done an ipo and so they've got to share with their shareholders what in the world is going on with them so company level the maturity of their processes um has got to be shared with shareholders so that people can know that the company's doing okay we're good what what so like i said i am not sharing anything that's not public information over here uh the processes at mtn were very lackluster and this is now at the time when i had arrived there i was i was now okay so okay okay let me just carry on giving you the the, the now you understand the stuff sorry the company has lots of young staff and lots of them are in senior positions uh because they grew with the company they got trained by outsourced um training companies and did not have their own training like they did not upskill their own trainers so as to i guess have an in-house training hard thing and the people that they were training they were also taking to school so they were just learning everything as they go along they did not feel the pinch of that initially even though most of the stuff were overheads for a very long amount of time before they actually became profitable due to the fact that the money was just rolling 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 they did an ipo they went public and it just blew up it was very successful blah blah it just became a very very successful company all right it, there's no one that doesn't know mtn it was one of the by the time I, I left the company it was one of the most recognizable brands in in africa one of the most recognizable uh, brands in africa and year before it had been voted uh employer of choice for something like five years in a row uh across africa so it was doing really very well can't really say what was going on with it uh, um overseas internationally but i do know that it had uh branches offices in the middle east and dubai and uh, project managers who aspired to go and see the world and live a better thing and live a different experience could apply for the dubai position uh i was once mina asked if i wanted to go to dubai and i was like what am i gonna do in the uae i better he job 24 hours a day i'm fine i rejected it right uh, but a lot of employees at mtn 
in order to boost themselves to grow really quickly because by the time i left <clears throat> people were not being promoted so easily anymore because the company had had become massive and they were now also getting skills from outside instead of at the taxi rank and what have you so <clears throat> if you wanted to become a gm real quickly a general manager real fast you would then go and work from your senior management position jump real fast into an opco like in nigeria go and be a gm in nigeria and then you'll come back to south africa and be an executive here that that's how a lot of people sort of kind of charted their careers and i was not prepared to relocate uh not that but then again i wasn't like um, the rug was pulled from under my feet before i could make such decisions as these but i was just so broody and so christian and so focused on family that i never would have made that career decision to just fly like a bird all over the world i wanted to get married so i was not ever going to go and then base myself in with nigerian son just because i want to grow my career i would have always just been waiting for a husband so everybody that afflicted me the living daylights out of me did so to a woman whose perspective and whose mindset was very different from everybody else's but they didn't know that however because i was as good as i was competitiveness caused them to cost me my entire future when i just wanted to be barefoot and pregnant like proper that's what i wanted but they thought i wanted to go and paint the world red with my like toenails and so they afflicted me but that's something that will ultimately uh, i'm going to get here get to over here so that was the way that the organization was growing and it grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and grew like a baby taking new clothing every two weeks on the way that the company was growing by the time i started working for mtn it would not be surprising at all goodness gracious just work with me lighting conditions i don't have time for this i'm telling a story that i don't even want to tell um it, it would not it was not a surprise for you to rock up at mtn and have a, somebody that is your boss that's like just two years older than you and by your boss i mean to some pretty senior professionals not boss to call center agents but senior professionals like people that were general managers executives at just at 30 you know what i mean it, it was just this like i used to say mtn was like a university campus for older grad students because it had a university vibe in it the way that everybody there was so young yet so successful it was a, a wonderful thing basically it, it really it was quite lovely all right but it ultimately ended up shooting mtn in the foot and i will tell you why uh they were um, building a university not so much a company and in a university there'll always be people that even though one day they hope to stop partying so much they they are still partying and one day you could find yourself ODing on cocaine when you still have like a whole future as uh, like a chartered accountant student at wits you've got a big future where you're gonna drop the cocaine but you're still taking it because you think you're like you still have next year that's what more or less the behavior internally of MTN was becoming like so like i said the skill the stuff there was more over like it was in an overhead mode for more years than the regular organization across the street the regular company for certain job roles at mtn uh, would have somebody with a lot more experience and what that was essentially strand a lot of people at mtn because whenever they wanted to leave the ones who were there from the very beginning whenever they wanted to leave and work somewhere else because they wanted a, chi a scene of a change sorry of scenery or whatever the 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 the, the competition was so rife in the market that they were like a baby they were insignificant in comparison to other candidates out there in the world and so they tended to stick around at mtn goodness there were people who were working for the company for 20 years Mutateng is only 34 and not 34 sorry like um the person is like only 44 like uh, you, you know when you get when you're 44 you've probably uh, like musical chairs hopped around maybe seven companies already just trying to grow your career but at mtn you found the kind of longevity for stuff that existed back in the 50s when there weren't that many corporates back in the yeah you get my point hiring where, where people will stay from with a company from the beginning of their career all the way up until they retire not in well at the time it was what like 2009 that was the time of people moving from standard bank to absa from absa to mtn from mtn to kpmg like yeah musical chairs like two years in one company when you were still young and growing your career was a very long time so it was surprising for me to find uh, people that were still young ish having been there for like 10 15 years 20 years it was a thing why the reason why that was the case was the uh, the exorbitant salaries they really rewarded staff they did take care of the people i'm not gonna lie okay 
uh, for the really exorbitant salaries really exorbitant bonuses and not only exorbitant salaries and bonuses but also uh, what is this exorbitant salaries and bonuses belonging to people that were not as that were, that were in exorbitant positions for their level of skill and expertise for their level of qualification and this would keep them at MTN because whenever they try to leave and get a competitive salary in another company and a competitive job role, job title in another company, they would come back dry. They would come back high and dry. And this is what caused sorrow in the souls of employees at MTN that were not with MTN from the very beginning. It caused a lot of sorrow in people who were hired from out of other organizations who had gathered all of these skills because these randos that had always been at MTN for like a million years. Do you understand? Yeah, they started to be given a real run for their money in terms of and ability and quality of delivery. They started to feel substandard and it caused yo guys that's like it's the games all right the games so much sabotage sabotage ria sabotacha it was out of this world like ridiculous anyway let's just go on now that you have understood what the company dynamic was right in the very beginning stages of it let's then move to when i was newly recruited there i was a young professional on the come up right and i had worked in multiple industries i had also worked in um within those multiple industries and mul different roles i am very intelligent i've been that way for a minute so at the end of well pretty much all my life i guess that would be a minute right uh at the end of high school i went to varsity i was there for two years had to drop out because my mother was not paying my fees i then successfully applied for a learnership program at liberty life that learnership lasted 10 months uh, i then from that learnership successfully interviewed for a call center job uh being a clay uh, as a claims consultant at Telishore, which is an insurance company a short uh, a short-term insurance company so car insurance all that jazz yeah i worked there uh, briefly, I then moved to NetBank, still a call center, but this time it was insurance, home loans. Uh, and then when I was at the insurance, or when I was at that call center, I hated the job. I've always just hated jobs and call centers. Uh, I hated the job, so I applied on the internet for some admin job somewhere else around in these streets, right? At the same time, I also took myself back to school at the same time. Mm -hmm. Applied for some jobs, blah, 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 all over the show. Barely qualified. Um, I had just started my career. And here it is, I'm busy moving around like musical chairs. Like I said, young people will move from one company to the other. In five years, they've lived, they've worked in five different companies. It's just the way that it is. All right. They only settle down once they start to become true professionals. And so they start to sit around maybe like my three years this time around or five in a company. I was still on the come up. Ain't nobody trying to sit around in a call center for a year. Like who's doing that? I guess there are many people, but not me. I was too ambitious. All right, uh, so I looked around in the internet in the organization where I was working since nobody out there was trying to hire me because I had barely any experience on my CV. So I figured internally I'm going to apply and I applied, applied and I was being ignored because I was not qualified enough even internally until eventually I got called for a training center administrator job at NetBank right uh interview and i was like yeah still while well, i was working for netbank so it was still a netbank job just somewhere else and it was within admin and thankfully now i was facing a future of leaving the call center once and for all wanted to get out of there went for this job interview <clears throat> and the lady who interviewed me loved me so 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 much and she was so impressed by me that she was like no i'm sorry gee that's how my career got given a boost like overnight something like three levels like i i just go like three men like levels like overnight just like that mm. i went to a job interview and as eloquent as i am right now the lady was like no way you are not going to be my administrator my colleague in hatfield is looking for an actual trainer so i was going to be a training center administrator so the the chicky that is booking the venues the chick that is making sure that all the biscuits are there that the oros is there the chick that's making sure that the um, the the uh, what is this trainers have got their flights booked that yeah i was supposed to be that girl and i was content to be that girl i didn't care because it was going to help me to squeeze my way out of the grain of eco center that's all that mattered and it was of course going to pay me a little bit more than what i was earning in the call center 
and uh, with me facing a future of being a training center administrator i would have pa i went to the first interview and then there was a second interview and it was at the second interview where i met the woman who would be my boss uh, because the first interview i was interviewed by uh at uh, like in at 40 whatever the main building there in downtown johannesburg by i i don't i can't remember who it was like an assessment online i can't recall but the one where i had to go all the way to santon yeah that's when i met the woman who would ultimately be my boss lady and she interviewed me and there were like four or three candidates that were vying for the same job and i was gonna get the job but she called me and she was like i i would i would love to give you the job if you want it however this is what i gotta say you know i i don't want you <clears throat> as a training center uh, administrator you're too uh, sk not skilled she didn't say skilled because I wasn't skilled that's the deal um, you're intelligent you're gifted you're well spoken the way your diction and we are looking for people like you we're looking for somebody that can uh, you know project themselves the way that you can we will train you we will train you we will train you are you prepared to go for an interview of this nature my colleague in Hatfield uh, has been looking for a trainer for a minute and not been able to find one and I think you're really good I was like what yeah she was like of course if you want to take this job as the administrator fine you can do that but I'm you know I'm offering you an opportunity to basically and get into the big leagues now I was like yeah I'll take it I'll take it I will take it I was so excited um, however, it wasn't a done deal. It wasn't guaranteed. So I essentially passed up a job opportunity so that the, the way they would hire somebody else um, in order to go and interview for another one where I might not get taken. Her colleague might not like me. Her colleague might not like me, but I, I was prepared to take that risk. And indeed, her colleague, I remember I wasn't able to make the first interview because of the fact that I was using public transport and I was late. I was stuck at pre taxi rank. It was so bad. I had to call them. They canceled it and um, re- <clears throat> said another one but this time around i had to go all the way to pretoria so i was like oh it's, it's fine it's okay i'll go all the way to pretoria i felt like trash i felt like trash but i kicked a butt hook i slayed i slayed we had to do a, a presentation where we were explaining certain things we were given what, what do you call this like a night um like a case study you could choose out of three options which one you want to do i chose one um and i prepared what well, we had to prepare this particular uh information at home we could do it at home do the research at, at home at work wherever using the internet yako officing and then come already and prepared and when i was sharing well when i was doing my case study i was stopped something like 15 minutes into it and my would-be boss was like where how long she was like how long have you worked for nedbank i was i told her i had, had only been there literally like a about almost a year at that call center job before i wanted to move over and she was like i am shocked out of my mind at the level of knowledge you know but then again i was a student at wits i knew how to research i knew how to find information out i knew how to put presentations together i knew how to do essays and i knew how to pre present myself i've always just been good um at oratory gift of the gab all that jazz so she was like thrown off her chair and was like when do you start not having a car was an issue but i ultimately bought a car within like three weeks so it was no longer a problem because it was a traveling job so i'm trying i told you that story briefly like just, just cutting it short frankly to help you understand how i grew up the corporate ladder how fast i grew what in the world and the heaven it is that proliferated my agenda along and how it was a miracle that I, f I grew as fast as I did and the reason why i grew as fast as i did was because i was often not appropriate for the jobs that i did go to interview for until the people who interviewed me were like no rather interview for this and so i just got promoted and promoted and promoted uh that job where i was a trainer at netbank i loved it but they i had challenges my boss was not the best she used to pass me shade give me grief i, I was struggling with uh, being at school at the same time because we had to travel to other provinces to train and whatnot and i wouldn't be in school and my my, my academic year was suffering right and my also trainer not trainer sorry my boss would not uh approve my uh, desire for having my fees paid for by the company because apparently i wasn't working there long enough it was just like a whole thing but anyway whatever i would have stuck around i would have stuck around because i did not hate that i loved it i did i loved the job but there were all these challenges but who doesn't have challenges when you're working a job and studying at the same time i was just gonna make it work somehow all my depression concerning all these issues i have i was gonna conquer it because i'm building my future that job uh like it from the salary that i was working at the call center i got three times 
Yeah, I, I, it wasn't even double. It was the, the salary I was earning at the call center was tripled in that job. Overnight, I remember when I quit my job, the boss lady, my boss at the call center was like, yo, type thing. When when he saw my uh, resignation letter and found out that I'm leaving for that particular job, shocked out of his mind because I not only caught up to their level, supervisor level in the call center, but I exceeded it when I ended up in Econet Banky. And then, like I said, I would not have quit that job, but I had the issues, the qualms that I had that I've just highlighted right now. And at my mom's company where she was working Kokijima, they were um, uh, interning project managers they were interning project managers they were trying to train up people to become project managers because there was a whole drive a new division that was raised up from the ground bubbled up like a hunger games arena and they were looking for junior project managers because they could not afford to buy or pay senior or advanced project managers since this was a new division they were testing it out they did not want to buy expensive resources so they were prepared to take people with a little bit of experience uh, uh you know minimum university degree blah blah and they will train them from scratch to be project managers and i did not have a degree none of that stuff uh, i was just like not even fit for the job but nepotism worked in my favor my mother was like there's a drive for such and such a, such a, such a, a project management a new intern thing at the company where I'm working uh, and I told my boss about you who is heading that particular department do you want to come and maybe see like I already put in a good word and he's happy to see you I was like yeah 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 because I was also complaining to her that oh school this that what 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 the other I'm struggling blah blah to get to school and what what a fish pay so ultimately let's just fast forward this like real quick I then ended up interviewing at Kijima successfully and I became a junior project manager over there and I interned there for something like a year all right and then the company that same division that was like all excited to start a new thing and flourish it off the ground i guess things didn't work out that's just what i'm getting at things didn't work out um i also didn't like it because it was too it intensive and i was just drowning in all of that it uh but nonetheless i lasted a whole year they they they, they gave me first a six month contract and extended it to a year so they were happy with me even though i was unhappy i did not want to be in such a hard knock it environment Environment. I wanted something a little bit more lighthearted um, uh, than that. So whatever. But the um, salary promotion, even though it I was a contractor, I was not permanent. Remember, I, I got like triple the salary when I was a trainer. They gave me another like seven thousand rands on top of that. So I was just for me. I was just getting all this money. Like all of a sudden, I was making all of this money. And at this stage, I'm like now 24 23 right and things are just really happening and happening and happening for me and i'm happy because i'm succeeding and i'm studying at the same time i'm getting jobs that require a degree uh, do you understand and i don't yet have one i'm studying and that was enough for them to be like okay you're gonna finish we can tell so it's fine as long as you keep on studying we're good so they recruited me uh, however the company the the division started to fall apart the company at large also stopped making money blah blah and so they started to retrench and the first people who would go it was a uh, last in first out um so the last person to start working is the first out that was their retrenchment model and uh, i was among the last in and so therefore i was among the first out uh, type establishment thing so i got retrenched but during the season of you know the section 189 process of retrenching staff members uh they also said that while this new division with project managers and it was like pa it was project managers and business analysts and it professionals that were all just getting retrenched like a lot of us okay there was how because the company at large in and of itself was not suffering and struggling and disbanding there was a uh, another it heavy department is heavy information systems heavy um division of the company that was recruiting project managers they needed project managers and in the that environment they were getting the way they were taking some pretty the way taking experienced people like very experienced people they wanted only experienced people so there were some project managers that took voluntary retrenchment that went over to that side but because the company was letting go of staff members from the side and we were they were i guess they had compassion on us they they would be like do you perhaps want to take some of our people so they don't have to lose a job and look for a job elsewhere they helped us look for jobs out there in the wilderness the internal hr staff was actively helping us 
get placed elsewhere be it outside of the company or in the company so i my cv was sent to the recruitment agency within the company to send out to the world out there and also internally so i got called by both the um the like ex the, the first of all the the, the the recruitment agency inside the organization it wasn't our it wasn't inside but our hr was communicating with the recruitment agency and sending our cvs and there was a, a recruitment agency that was recruiting boldly and heavily at that time for mtn and mtn and kijima used to work closely together they used to work well they were a part they, they had a partnership still to this day they're partnered they're a business partner of mtn if you if at all you're a kijima staff member you likely have got an, a, a, a staff cell phone that is contracted with mtn okay and so because uh, kijima was busy retrenching its own business analysts its own project managers its own it professionals um one of the companies that it sent our CVs too was MTN because it's a business partner and at the same time miraculously MTN was also starting a new division from the ground uh, uh, there was a recruitment drive for project managers uh, and business analysts and IT professionals uh, in order to I guess uh, be, remember I told you that MTN was lax when it came to processes uh, it was lax when it came to the quality of um, people the, the quality of the staff at mtn uh was sort of kind of lackluster because it was these people that they took long ago they were trained by outsourced companies they it was like a university running at the same time as a company uh, however skills were starting to become in 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 in, in it was in uh, there was a shortfall of skills there was a skills shortfall inside mtn and there came a time when the organization started to notice that they're starting to plateau when it comes to their growth they're starting to decline not plateau decline plateau is a heavy word because they were still doing well but not as well as they used to and they realized that they needed skills they needed people who who know what they're doing who have been working for a minute so they started to actively seek out project managers business analysts it professionals developers uh, testers all that jazz that have done the time and they've got ashy knees and cracked lips having worked for standard bank for five years and bank salary right they needed people who have been trained properly by a by mature organizations mature organizations right so seasoned project managers seasoned business analysts seasoned you get my point they were starting to recruit them because the stuff the the quality of stuff at mtn skills wise and expertise was was not that high because of i've already explained to you why that was the case so uh kijima was a is a an it company with very high quality it professionals and so when it was retrenching mtn was prepared to interview the candidates that were flooding out of there because that's like high quality it stuff high quality business analysts high quality project managers um and also from the market out there from banks they wanted organizations whose people knew how to do business requirements specifications without being trained first from scratch like you are a seasoned ba that have that has got uh, a ba certification and we want you to hit the ground running remember i told you at mtn overheads were a problem in the sense that like staff overheads where it is that a person will be a, like a, a non-profitable to the company for two years before they will start to make any real sense they now wanted people who would give that turnover a run for its money where it is that they are just an overhead for six months and then thereafter they're hitting the ground running they wanted to improve those stats they wanted to get people who were just fireballs walking around really quickly yeah no man oh man did they cause us problems <laughs> they caused those um, those staff members problems the senior staff that was working at mtn that was not that good that was not that skilled they were so intimidated by the new recruits they were so intimidated by the new recruits because like i said they'd been getting ashy knees working for fnb for four years with cracked lips learning the, the, the from the rudimentary levels their craft and they had basically become a, a, a jack of that particular trade and a master of that trade and they were now walking into an organization where your boss does not know how to put together a proper rds and that would be a requirements definition specification that was the pra the challenge that was the problem so Jordan, when you're dealing with legacy staff that is unskilled in the presence of all of these fireballs all over the show you are going to be a saboteur do you understand of note you are gonna be a saboteur of note 
nonetheless having engaged that mtn uh went on right ahead to hire uh not hire sorry they were on this recruitment drive but remember karabo is an anomaly i i will not lie i am an anomaly i've been an anomaly all my life because i'm a genius i have been pushed along in a way that other people just haven't been pushed along and it was happening in uh what do you call this in corporate where it is that i was supposed to be working at that stage as a training center administrator buying biscuits for the delegates that are going to be coming for training on tuesday and then i just got like a job just like that as a as a what do you call this as a trainer i was supposed to stick around in that job as a trainer for a good few years but instead i was I, I successfully interviewed for a job that required um a degree at a minimum and the person who interviewed me liked me so much that they didn't even care that i didn't have a degree because they figured i was going to finish it anyway and then i interned as a project manager at, at, at mtn so i not mtn at kijima i was not supposed to get these jobs so therefore i was not supposed to grow that quickly this is the thing that got me hurt so when i say upon reiterating what i spoke about earlier that the people who afflicted me knew that I was a beast. They knew I was a beast because they, they made these observations. We were all the same age and they were struggling. They were doctoring about like little geriatrics just to get an internship. And I was just flying into jobs that required years of experience that also required degrees. And uh, people were like out of their minds on some what's going on over here. That was a combination of yes, my own ingenuity, but the Lord, God. I was not saved yet, but he knew what he was going to do with my life. Okay, so Karabo is an anomaly, an outlier. So in terms of the... Um, number of years of working the expertise the skills and also the qualifications i was still quite junior i was still quite junior in comparison however to the quality of employee that mtn would ultimately employ in this drive when they were starting this uh, um, uh, th these business units from the ground the business units on, on from the ground of which they were starting them because this company was starting to notice an issue they then came up with a strategy they needed to now start innovating they needed teams that were support teams for marketing support teams for tech they needed to be more mature they needed processes to be improved because in the previous years okay let's just move to the next part in the previous years remember people were recruited from taxi ranks and then like just 15 years later they're executives in a particular uh, department right let's not take away from them the striving the hard work they had to put in but in comparison to an hr executive at vodacom not vodacom sorry but like a standard bank or whatever our hr just did not compare like you, you get my point they were struggling basic things that an organization ought to check and take from the uh, from the very beginning they did not do it and so they fell behind administratively administratively and the kind of thing that makes sure that legislatively so by regulation you are good you can carry on every organization especially when you have gone public uh, given that you are accountable now to shareholders has got uh, to do yearly MTN was no different from any other organization financial audits were being done and audits within the telecommunications industry that ought to have been that would appease bodies like ICASA etc what being done we were getting like uh, you know CMMI indexes and like maturity indexes and all that stuff we were for the life of us being looked at just like any other giant corporation in this country it was a massive corporation and of course when you don't pass an audit when you don't pass an audit the auditor the auditing firm will give you a warning right and then tell you that within six to 18 months you need to get your act together and be at this level otherwise you're gonna pay this kind of fine um and you will keep paying this fine every year until your your, your act is together so mtn started getting audited well i mean they've been getting audited all along but for the level of company they were becoming uh now they had to pass certain orders by a certain time because now they were responsible to a lot more south africans um that's what's good and so they started to panic and everything all over the show and then there was like a massive recruitment drive over and above a company refurbishment for the actual building structure by the time i started working there they were already finished with um, construction work but uh, the construction work in and of itself was precisely because they had to expand the company to make room for more desks more um uh, what do you call this more departments remember i told you mtn used to outsource training now they were building an in-house they wanted trainers that would uh, train that would that would be our own stuff who would then transfer skills to people over uh where it is that lessons that would be taught by uh, other organizations well it was also a cost saving exercise because now they actually cared about saving money because before they, it was just falling like confetti all over the show so they were kind of sort of low-key 
into that maverick spending business uh but now they were like we need to see if we can't bring certain things in-house instead of outsourcing blah 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 all that jazz so they brought training in-house they also saw that they needed project like uh, people who are seasoned in what they do so as to fast track the process of being um of, of honoring the edits of adhering to the standards that the auditors wanted us to adhere to and the best way to quickly what is this um uh, uh, comply auditing requirements is to get people who are already you know trained or seasoned in working for organizations that were very mature very mature so they uh, deliberately recruited people that were from banks so a lot of the staff members that ended up working at mtn were from standard bank especially standard bank they were like stealing standard bank stuff like no man's business um uh but banks just in general total fnb but they were taking because banks are very mature banks have been around for a minute banks have been around since the days of apartheid and so their processes have are just like on fire on they're very sharp right uh, if if you if you if you have worked in corporate within this particular space you will know what I'm, i mean right there are certain industries that are just a uh, top tier in the market when it comes to audits when it comes to maturity processes uh all that jazz and banks were that thing so a lot of the stuff were coming from uh banking companies but of course they did hire a lot of people from engineering companies and industrial engineering because they they are of course trying to what is this they're trying to make uh, you know mtn is like you know egg before the kitchen uh, before the chicken chicken before the egg it's like they made a lot of money before they ran a company properly that's what i'm trying to explain to you guys they first made lots of money and then they had to catch up with processes and all that stuff so they needed people who were well trained in industrial engineering as well who knew how organization ought work so they needed like you know like the supply chain uh, how, how they needed people with experience in this regard instead of training them up because they saw that they needed skilled professionals so by the time i started working at mtn already this recruitment drive was like maybe a year a year and a half perhaps two years in and so i found people there already but it was a new drive it was a new drive and it was so gargantuan a drive to basically recruit skilled professionals that would get the company to the level that it needs to get to in order to adhere to audits uh, that they had to build like a new section of the building they had to refurbish they had to extend the house uh, type thing but by the time i was working there they were already finished with the the company refurbishment like geo what is this um not geographically but i guess geographically but i wanted to say is logistically the actual like you know warm bodies in a chair the ergonomics of it all that was already in place so it was a beautiful building that was new and everything was lovely it smelled great the canteen ergonomic design it was just i loved working there until i just got kicked out like i was nothing after five whole years i was not the kind of person to stick around in a company as you could tell i was playing musical chairs between companies um and i stayed at mtn for five years five whole years i stayed there for five years that was a miracle for a person like me and one of the biggest reasons why i also stayed at mtn for five years is because they gave me a salary that was not competitive in the market for the skill that i was at I told you the the people there they they would reward they would reward them or incentivize them quite a bit with money uh but they would not be that skilled and so you would like knock on the door of another company to work for them and they wouldn't even call you they would not even call you because uh, goodness in comparison to all these other CVs you don't have any experience you don't have any experience but that became something uh would 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 cost a lot of people a lot of pain tears and snot and drama tears and 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 and, and drama is the same thing very well okay i want a story saying like it's gonna take forever in a day but hopefully the end of it will just be a pinnacle so you can understand what i'm talking about concerning israel mm. all right so at the same time kijima was hiring uh, sorry was retrenching mtn was on this recruitment drive that i've explained to you guys there was however another department in inside kijima that wanted project managers and guys like i said i've been good at what i do pretty much in every field i've ever been in just because i didn't like the job doesn't mean i wasn't any good at it right so uh, because the company helped us get jobs right they helped us uh, get hired in different places right i then went just like all the other project managers that were retrenched right i got retrenched uh, but then i was given time of course you know uh, you three, three months notice type thing before you are finished and in that three months they would try and place us elsewhere so we don't have to sit at home type thing so i was sent to an interview 
internally that was prepared to interview me because of the fact that I was from inside. If I had applied for this job from outside, they would not have even looked at my CV. Why? Because I was not experienced. I was not experienced. I told you guys, I had just, I had been a project manager for literally just like a year, a year. The job I had prior to that, I was a trainer and there I was also for, for a year. Yes, my salary was busy growing like exponentially each year me moving from different like not only industries but professions all together just changing them so i've been uh in in long-term insurance wealth management i've been in long-term insurance i've been in short-term insurance i've been in banking i have been in it and within all of those spaces it wasn't the same job it was different jobs the ones were call centers then i was a trainer and then i was a project manager and I, that would pretty much be a thing until the rest of my life okay until my death because it appears i am passing away isn't it anyway whatever right oh so that's why whenever i'm always talking about professions i'm always speaking about project management it's pretty much what i know okay very well so here it is that this lady oh yeah and kichima trained me as well because i was an intern and they were indeed trying to get brand spanking new people because it was an experimental new division they didn't want to get too expensive resources they also trained us they took us to school the whole league nine pinball blah got it under my belt through kijima amen and it was in-house it, it was not outsourced because uh kijima had given that it's an it organization it had to have a very strong project management force so their it training not it but their project management training t um they project management trainers were in-house and they would train the trainer whenever a new trainer would come on board type thing they would not have to go to uh pm uh ideas the company the name brinston or whatever because it was in-house 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 and accredited through our accrediting bodies of this country yeah you get my point very well so i had the minimum stuff that i needed and i was studying at this university uh i was at that stage maybe like in year in my second year ish because i had changed my degree uh course after going part-time because you could not take i want i was doing a, a law thing when i was full-time at this and they don't offer law ish y'all they didn't offer law at at part-time covid so i had to change my trajectory meaning that i pretty much started from first year again when i went back um to to school so i was in like year one and a half to two given that i had just been back to school for about two years and you can only do half the subjects when you're when you're part-time you can't do them all type thing so i was like in i i was like in my f one and a half ish year adverts and they trusted i would finish so i mean that's a lot of trust over there if i was maybe in my third year or even second year finished maybe you can trust me but they trusted me anyway they had good reason to because i finally got to third year and then everything of mine just froze anyway whatever right oh so cool beans and bananas uh the company sorry the, the is department would not have recruited me inside kijima given that i wanted seasoned project managers that were very good at what they did uh in their very advanced hard knock department that was building systems for the home affairs and all different kinds of technical places and i couldn't deal i couldn't handle but i also couldn't handle in the other place because they were dealing with mining and the way bridges for trucks and i had to understand those i was so unhappy at kijima like the the contract that they were working on i you know guys it i never got it i, I literally i it's the one thing that i never ever got to appreciate uh, the one industry that really to the eye uh, man yo hi anyway it chose me i didn't choose it and the way that it chose me it was by force it, yeah it was proper is was trying to assault me because i did not want it i'm too creative to be in that industry anyway whatever cool beans i was in it anyway i was just studying the software development life cycle when i don't care uh but nonetheless i had to make money i had to pay for my 25th birthday party who's gonna pay for it who who right okay cool beans and my 25th birthday was elaborate guys elaborate because i was making money even though i was being pushed and different like as with the wind my career very miraculously oh what i do huh you know nonsense i was just being pushed along okay cool beans yeah so i interview at this is department where now i'm going to be working go home affairs and i'm not feeling it you know <laughs> i'm gonna have to actually go to yeah proper go eh, eh. yo guys are so unhappy i was so unhappy all right in that job interview parts of the interview were done in africans <laughs> Parts of the 
interview were done in Afrikaans because apparently allegedly I would be working in largely the Pretoria region right uh the company in and of itself is in midrand i would be working largely in the pretoria region and i would be working with uh, like bura months that were unprepared to speak english like just unprepared and if you don't know how to speak afrikaans you can't work in that team if you not speak but at least understand it if you cannot understand afrikaans as, as it is spoken you could not work there so i was partially interviewed in afrikaans because apparently some of the clients were still stuck in the buramach and would not speak english and they would hold entire meetings in afrikaans and you would have to take notes as a project manager and know what under heaven you need to do and understand what was said otherwise they're gonna find you useless in the room so <laughs> i paused the interview because i was able <laughs> to understand <laughs> i was able to understand afrikaans uh, they said to me that they're gonna interview me partially in afrikaans i don't have to respond in afrikaans but uh, i have to respond in english in a way that suggests i understood the afrikaans <laughs> and i paused <laughs> So, a no Afrikaans person can speak nonsense to about me in a lift and expect me not to hear them. I I I hear it. A good Afrikaans, even though I can't if a hundred hundred percent understand Afrikaans, I can I can wear. You can't you can't gossip me in Afrikaans. You can't you can't gossip anyone in Afrikaans. Um. And the black community, if at all, they were growing up in this in the ninety in the ni late uh, like nineties and two early two thousands. Uh, you you can't you can like yeah in the late eighties nineties. A kid that grew up in schools like those, you cannot gossip them in Afrikaans because it was um, a compulsory language in school. We had to take it with English. Uh, the kids of my sister's generation were able to not have it as a subject because they could choose what subject they wanted to do. English is the only one that was a uh, set in the curriculum, but with us, it was forced. So, can nobody gossip a 1984 baby? The Afrikaans, unless of course you weren't listening in class, but I was. Okay, I was. I was. Anyway, so I passed that interview, but the, the Afrikaans was not the only thing that helped me along uh the understanding of afrikaans i was good at, at what it is that i and they liked me enough that even though i lacked experience they were prepared to give me an opportunity and they extended my contract by another six months remember i told you i was on this like these like six month um contracts that kept on kept on getting renewed so there was the one renewal and then the other one and so i was there for a year this time around i was going to be there for 18 months all right and i was i would now have to just kind of learn this environment and do good and be yo guys whoa my boss was pretty good people and she would call me into meetings but half the time when they were speaking i didn't even understand what they were talking about it was just so complicated like the it side i was extremely unhappy and thank god at the same time however i got an in i got called in finally for an interview by the recruitment agency uh, an interview by the recruitment agency remember there was a recruitment agency that uh kijima my the company where it is that i was working was helping kijima retrenchees moved to other companies yeah and mtn was one of the companies that that they were recruiting for this lady at this particular recruitment agency was trying very hard for me uh to call to to get me interviewed by mtn she was she she called me in no no she wasn't trying for me sorry she would she called everybody first before me because i was inexperienced my cv was lackluster i was only a project manager for like a year and yes i'd done the training but like come on like you know mtn was looking for seasoned project managers like really good project managers uh, because for the reasons i have highlighted above and so this lady took like maybe two months i was working in that other environment for something like two to three months so half my contract before I ended up leaving um, Kijima because this recruitment agent lady did not trust my CV. But ultimately, when she when all the candidates ran ran dry that they were trying to recruit for MTN, MTN was still busy calling Kijima on some. Do you have any more? Do you have any more? Do you have any more? Because they were taking a lot of people from experienced organizations with strong processes and it companies were among them so if mtn could have taken all the stuff at ibm they would have taken all the stuff there if, if they could have taken yeah you get my point so they 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 really wanted like high quality people and uh when then they would interview and they still needed more people 
they would call this agency on some anymore anymore and this lady would be like okay i'll look for somebody and then finally she saw this one like luster cv that she was not interested in seeing and she called me on some hi Karam, how are you are you still looking and i looked around at this environment where i was working and how unhappy i was okay and i was like yeah i am i am i am she's like okay please come in for an interview at this particular estate at the agency i go to the lady at the agency and i interview with her and she's again i told i'm really good at i guess I, I, I talk well guys but i'm not just all talk i'm also really good action right so in terms of even providing examples of what i've done on the job this woman was like i can't believe it took me so long to see you because you you interview so well and even better sometimes than some of the people who have got a lot of experience but i do have a concern that you are ba barely experienced I really do have a concern that you're barely experienced but nonetheless i'm going to root for you go mtn because i like you i like you so that lady fought for me she fought for me she called mtn and mtn was like bring the cv and when they saw my cv they were like ay 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 listen her name was palissa they were like ay palissa mm -mm. like what are we gonna do with this little child over here like she has no experience like what's going on what's going on and palissa kept on calling them and like you know insisting forcing pushing pushing the matter until ultimately one of the guys that will ultimately that would ultimately become one of my bosses uh, was like fine we'll see her fine we'll see her and that was when i went for the interview at mtn and when i rocked up there they started interviewing me and something like two seconds into the interview uh this guy was like he literally <laughs> looked at me like i you you're good at speaking you can regurgitate a textbook all up in my grill but you have no experience this is mtn we're trying to hire very skilled project managers but i like you so i guess i've been proliferated and pushed along squeezed out of a toothpaste tube that's what's good it appears by people just liking me that is 100 percent god it had to have been the favor of the lord this guy was like i like you i don't want to let you go but i'm not comfortable with hiring you as a project manager um how would you like to work as a program coordinator which would be the tenement of a project administrator just for programs uh, type thing and if we like you maybe after six months to a year you can then get promoted to project manager because there will always be positions for pms in this place because i was so unhappy at the other place where i was at i was like and happy mtn was so close to where i stayed it was in ready it was in uh, constantia uh, where and i lived at the time in um in this complex i lived with uh, my mother at the time in this very complex that we're living in now Vilkehevel. it was close to work it was easy to go to school from the the logistics of it was so much better for me to also juggle school with work that's why i stayed there for five years i was able to smoothly do Wits university lectures in the evenings when i was working at mtn because it was not far and it was against traffic when i was going to school um at the end of the day as opposed to in traffic because when i was working in hatfield pretoria and also in midrand gokijima i was on that n m1 south with the Jan Smuts avenue empire violence of traffic and i would sometimes get to lectures 45 minutes before they were over a three-hour lecture yo guys it was it was so rough for me it was so rough and when i worked at mtn on at lectures on time maybe late by just half an hour and i was good i was able to finally be the student i wanted to be and i could take more subjects in order to try and fast track get my degree but then rugs were pulled from under my feet right so that's the woman that i was on the come up so i took i took the job i took it well i mean i i would later interview for another job so that job unlike the other ones where i was in I, I went for an interview for a lowlier job and i got a loftier one this time around i went for a lofty job interview as a project manager and i got a lowlier one but i took it and the I, I remember i told you that mtn had these ridiculous salaries here it is that i was earning a project management entry level um salary at kijima right contracting i still managed to get a salary increase even though i took a demotion because that's how high salaries were at mtn that's how high they were so as an administrator i earned more than i was earning as a project manager junior as a jpm so i had one year junior project management experience under my belt and then i would go on right ahead to be deceived and duped into sticking around in that job for two years 
He said six months, this guy. He lied to me. Anyway, we're going to fast forward this real hard now because we are not trying to give you my entire employment history. We're getting to a particular point. I then ended up working at MTN as a program coordinator, so in an administrative role. And during the time, I was working my way into project management. I was shadowing P PMs. I was working on projects I liked. It was not hard knock or 100% IT. So it was more business uh, related. It was heavy with processes. So another reason they liked me was because I had been in the banks. I had been in the banks and I had been in processes i was a trainer so in and of myself i had to be adept with tra with with uh, uh, cmmi processes uh as a trainer because i had to train uh, staff members in the branches etc and for that you had to be really good with processes so that also worked in my favor and uh, so the or i was an, uh, an auditor to an auditor to uh for projects and trying to get at uh, we basically as administrators coordinators we our job was to get the company to a place where the next audit we're not going to be failing it type establishment thing so it was a very responsible job that was more than just merely administrative. I was not an administrator and an administrator of projects. I was not saving minutes, uh, meeting minute meetings. I was not um, doing minutes for project managers. I was not booking meetings for project managers. I was I was responsible for getting the whole department, Yadi project managers, the program managers, and their boss to a point they would pass the next audit. So it was quite an important job we had to make sure that you know processes were in a part like basically a company strategy right uh type thing that they were on now that they were getting so big and now the eye of you know the big brother was looking at them the way that it was looking i was in that for two years i was starting to get disillusioned blah blah until ultimately now we're getting to the point the juice the gist and hopefully now i'm not going to be talking for much longer when i get to the juice the gist right I was a program coordinator, so I wasn't too intimidating, uh, at least at face value, to senior management in the organization. Uh, the people that were, however, intimidating to senior management in the organization were level threes. That would be the equivalent of like project managers, business analysts in legal and regulatory. It would be the lady that is the management level legal expert. Uh, it was, yeah, it was young professionals, degreed professionals that gave them a run for their money in terms of their skills and expertise. It was project managers that knew more than their bosses. It was a business analyst that knew more than their bosses. It was developers that knew more than their bosses. It was, you get my point, their bosses had been with MTN all this time. However, everybody else had come from outside and where they had worked, like for instance, the one of the subordinates of my boss had worked he was an industrial engineer and he had worked for bmw he had worked for like all of these like he, uh, so he, was, he was within supply chain right that was his job he had worked across such big industries in this role that he basically gave my boss a run for her money he gave my boss a run for my, her money and ultimately he got promoted to senior manager he did get promoted to senior manager the same woman of which when she was trying to become a general manager failed the interview in favor of somebody else that was one of those outside recruits that was very skilled and so did not compare did not add up the two of them a business the, she used to be a business analyst and grew 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 and then became a senior manager right because I was a um, a program coordinator and we had to uh, learn what a good I uh, how can I say this? We, like, not only were processes really messed up, but how people did RDS is the quality of, of the documents that were banked in, in order for there to be a successful possibility of reverse engineering and RDS to or re reverse engineering an entire project to its RDS and there being a, a traceability success, a hand to glove success. That was important because whatever it is that ultimately mtn produced in the market there had to be like records on file of specifications that professionals can ask to look at and therefore understand how this product works stuff like that had to be in place you can't just have a product without a spec if you know what i mean and the specs were so poorly written they were so poorly written guys not adhering to any of the pm bock laws if you were a project manager so your scope document leaves so much to be desired. I was a project manager in the last job I was in. And so I had seen quite a lot of RDSs in my life. I've seen a lot of conceptual solution designs from developers in my life. I had, uh, that, that were in that Waybridge and that whole home affairs system 
whatever i had seen a lot of them even though i had not understood them properly and they made my eyes squint i'd seen what a quality conceptual solution design looks like a quality um a uh, testing plan looks like i had seen what a quality scope document quality document financial model looks like i had seen it in my previous job i had also known what needs to be put in how much work needs to be put in at the beginning of a project in order for your boss to give you a go ahead to essentially just run your kickoff meeting i had been through all of that i'd been through that school i'd seen all those that paper and when i got to mtn guys we would be like papa a project that was perhaps like <laughs> five years old so it's still a project it's not yet launched it's not gone to market it's just been running around for five years it's a scope document i mean it's been running for five years <laughs> the scope gotta tell me more than one page guys you're, you're, you're like why what's if at all changes were made they gotta be an addendum and the addendum needs to be uploaded on the system so that i can see what changed uh, iterations versions we need to be able to see the, the the paper trail going digital all the stuff that's been uploaded on the computer fine we need to see it we need to see it there were like three page rds's guys requirement specification uh, documents for projects that were still running a good four and a half years down the line and for me it's like how am i supposed to understand what your project is about just by reading this rds because i can't comprehend it it doesn't make sense and the project managers the project managers were very mature because they came from outside they were from banks they were from engineering companies they were etc the frustration in the what do you call this thing mm, uh, what do you call this uh, like handover uh, a lot of the projects they were running them definitely like, haphazardly there were no project managers it was like uh, for instance my boss told me that in the beginning like uh, the one resource would be a project ba and project manager like one resource would write the rds and they would write the scope document they would write the, the, the yeah all in one so they were very low qual and so uh, some of them given that some of them had left the project managers had to basically re-scope a lot of projects that were already like five years in three years in two years in and it was quite a nightmare so there was a lot of frustration here it is that we're dealing with this company that has got such a low staff turnover in other words people don't leave right because they're happy they're getting big bonuses etc and now all the new stuff that is very high quality that has been given these competitive salaries just and like you know, let me move to the next part